Hi. I'd like to wait for this. I'm kind of in a hurry. Sure isn't everybody. Joe, take care of that, would you? What's your problem? Problems, huh? I gotta have this fixed in an hour. Two hundred dollars, and it still misses. How many times do I have to bring this car in before you fix it? The grease your mechanic got on the seat. How are you gonna take care of this? And now check around noon and see how it's coming. Customers. Some of them I'd like to take care of. Hey, Mike. The grease rack's jammed again. I'm sorry, sir, but customers are not allowed in this area. I want to talk to that no good calls himself customer service manager in this place. Look, I, I didn't mean it. I was going to stop the rack before it hit that guy anyway. Honest. I know you were. That short circuit was only meant to get your attention, to stop you, not to bring you here. I'm okay. sorry, Mike. Heaven knows accidents will happen. Well, look, that's OK. I accept your apology. You just uh, send me on back, and we'll forget the whole thing. I'm afraid it's not that easy. It'll take a miracle to get you back. Well, that's your business, isn't it? No, I mean, it'll take a miracle from you. You've got to find the key, the secret to customer relations, before I can send you back. Now, wait a minute. You're the guy that got me up here in the first place. Maybe. But the way you handle customers is partly what got you here. Well, look, I, I didn't mean it. Look, I'll be, uh, I'll be much more patient with the customers from now on. Mr. Friendly, that's me. Huh? <laughs> no, that won't work. I just wouldn't feel right sending you back unless I were sure you understood the real secret of good customer relations. Secret? Hey, now, what is this? Who are you? You're kidding. You're the great training director in the sky? Well, I don't feel like a great training director right now. Look, don't give up on me yet. Say, I've got an idea. Why don't you just tell me this big secret about customer relations and then you can send me on back? It's not something I can just tell you. You have to find out for yourself. Now, how am I going to do that? There's no customers up here. Well, you've got a point. OK. I've got an idea. Now, these are files on companies and organizations down there that have employees who need help with customer relations. Mm -hmm. Now, I can let you go back and work with some people from three of these. How can I help anyone with customer relations? My relations with customers is what got me here in the first place. I'll help you. Mm -hmm. There are many excellent customer relations techniques we can teach these people. And as we do, maybe you'll discover what I was trying to teach you. I'll bet you already know a lot more about customer relations than you think. Well, I, discovering this uh, big secret about customer relations is the only way I can get back, right? I don't see any other way. Now, don't get me wrong. I, I appreciate being up here. OK. Where do we start? Meet Ed. He's an appliance salesman in Deaton's department store. You can see his problem, can't you? Well, I can see my problem. I don't know a thing about appliances. Now, good customer relations are the same wherever you meet customers. Whether it's in a garage, or a financial institution, or a store. You see, Ed's problem has nothing to do with appliances. You don't understand. It's for my girls. Oh, daughters. Then this refrigerator is the one for you. Not too large, but it's got all the frills your girls will like. See here? A little ice maker that we I'm We don't sure need you would... a little ice maker. Hi, girls. Hi. 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 Are you going to buy the new refrigerators for our school? Not here. She wanted refrigerators for a girl's school. Why didn't she tell me? How could she? He was doing all the telling. But he should have been asking questions and listening. Yeah, but those are sales techniques. What does that have to do with customer relations? Everything. How can you take care of your customers if you don't know what they need or want? Good point. You're going to love these microwaves. My wife makes the best things in them. 
I see now what the problem is. He thinks he's the most important part of that twosome. Yeah. Well, help him. Huh? Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, how can I do that? Look, he doesn't even know I'm here. Tell him to do something. Yeah. Forget how you would use it. Find out how she would use it. Ask her some questions. Have you ever used a microwave before? No. Hey, it works. Uh, don't ask yes or no questions. Ask an open-ended question. That way you can get her talking about her feelings about what she needs. How do you intend to use a microwave? That's a good question. But you need more of those. Probably to defrost things and warm up meals. I work, so we eat a lot of frozen food. Now ask her a fact-finding question so you can narrow it down. How many people will be using this unit? There are four of us. Any children? Two. Then this unit is what you want. It's absolutely kid-proof. Hold it. You're not sure that's what she needs to help. Try stating her needs in your own words. I'm sorry. Let's see. I'd say you need something simple to operate. Not too large because you don't cook that much and safe for small children, right? Oh, no. My two children are teenage boys. Big teenage boys. I spend my whole weekend cooking meals and freezing them for weeknight dinners. But this unit holds more than you think. Yeah, stop. You didn't listen. What did she say? She spent her whole weekend cooking. She just told you a lot about her situation. Now see if you can state what she wants. Perhaps you want a larger and more sophisticated unit that you could use to do the majority of your weekend cooking as well as those weeknight warm-ups? Now that's a satisfied customer. What more can he do? Oh, he might suggest something she's forgotten or doesn't know. Oh, yeah. Is there anything else that might be helpful to her? I've got something else that might be helpful to you. We have a service contract which could save you a lot of money if you should have a problem. How does that work? Hi, I'll be with you in just a few moments, okay? Boy, it's had sales all afternoon. And that's the bottom line. You know, I think the key to good customer relations could be helping that customer get exactly what they want and need. Is that the secret? Well, that's certainly important. But the real secret to customer relations goes beyond asking questions and listening. For instance, Ed, he's already helped her get the washing machine she needs. Mm -hmm. But he's not done helping her. And your new washer will be delivered and hooked up for you on Monday. Is there any chance I could get delivery Friday? We're expecting weekend gifts. Five small kids. And you know how much laundry that is. Nope. Monday's the delivery day for your area. Unfortunately, I just sell washers. I don't deliver them. He's got a point there. What can he do? If you were the customer, what would you want him to do? Yeah. Try to understand how she feels. Five children coming and no washer. Okay. I know how much laundry children can make. Let me take you over to customer service. We'll see if they can do something. Good. He's not just sending her to customer services. He's taking her there. Yeah, but what if he can't change the delivery date? Thank you so much for your effort. I really appreciate it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I see. The point is he made the effort. Now he's concerned about the customer's needs, and the customer knows it and appreciates it. That's the point. Do something extra. Hey, is that it? Do something extra for the customer above and beyond the call of duty? Yeah, give 110%, go that extra mile? You know, I can see now how important that must be to the customer. Is that the secret? You're close, but it goes even deeper. Well, let's hope tomorrow turns out better for you. Maybe you'll discover the secret while you're helping Joan with her problems. Who's Joan? Joan is a financial services representative at a branch of a financial institution. Hi. There you go, sir. I think you can already see part of her problem. Sure can. Doesn't she know that the way she looks turns customers off? <laughs> Even I know that. Help her. Tell her what to do. Uh, what should I tell her? Start with these simple things that we've all heard before, but that are so easy to forget when we get busy. Keep the work area neat. Be well-groomed. Recognize the customer immediately. Smile. Give the customer full attention. OK, I'll try. Why don't you straighten all this up? You think all this makes you look important just because you seem busy? It doesn't. Keeping yourself in your work area neat is what makes you look professional. Yeah. 
Go ahead. Hey, it works. Don't forget the rubber bands. Yeah, that's much better. Come on, she has to know about recognizing customers right away. Of course she does, but when she gets busy, sometimes she forgets. I know the feeling. There's nothing as important as that customer right now. Uh, tell her you'll be with her in a moment. I'll be with you in just a moment. Yeah. Good morning. What can I do for you today? I'm getting a loan for a car, and I need to fill out some kind of a form for the title. Uh, application for title. Here you go. Why don't you just fill that out? Oh, no, no. Your actions are telling the customer she's not as important as your paperwork. Show her that her transaction is the most important job you have right now. Help her. Uh, excuse me. Would you like me to help you fill that out? Would you like to sit down? Thank you. Would you? I don't think I understand that. Nice job, Joan. By the way, I wrote a check last week for $500 to the Wallace Company. Can I find out if that's come in yet? Yeah. Well, yes. Just give me your account number. 433-6-844. Oh, no. The computer's down again. That means I can't give you that information. I can't even tell you when the computer's going to be up. What can she do? She can tell the customer what she can do instead of what she can't do. Let me tell you what I can do, though. I can mail you the information, or I can phone you when the computer's up. Or I can go down to bookkeeping and look through the hard copies to see if the information has come in yet. Which one would you like? Would you call me? I'd appreciate it. Of course, I'd be happy to. Just give me your phone number. I'll remember that. Focus on what can be done, not what can't be done. You know, I did learn something. I got Joan to smile and show the customer by her actions that she really was ready to help. But it wouldn't have worked if she hadn't been sincere about it, would it? Right. Nothing turns a person off faster than a phony smile or a phony offer to help. Hey, is that the secret? That you've got to look like you're ready to help and mean it. You're learning, Mike. But what about the customer who can't see how you look? Huh? Let's go back to that financial institution. If you have a job like Susan's, sometimes the customer only hears you. Susan Coe. Mm-hmm. We have regular savings accounts, notice accounts, certificate savings, and club accounts. Well, the interest depends on a lot of things, the amount of the deposit. What did you say? I said the amount of the deposit. Oh, that's a good idea. Come in any time. Boy, she could learn a thing or two about phone technique, couldn't she? Yes. Just a few simple things like these that most of us already know make such a difference in the impression made over the telephone. Answer promptly. Put a smile in your voice. Speak clearly. Identify yourself. Use customer's name frequently. Say thank you. Okay. This time, she'll do it differently. Answer before the third ring. Greet the caller, identify your department, and yourself. Good morning. You put a smile in your voice. Good morning. Financial Services Department, Susan Coe speaking. May I help you? Uh, uh, the customer deserves your full attention, remember? Same thing applies on the phone as in person. It'll take a while to get that information. Speak clearly. Oh, I'm sorry. It may take me a while... Not too loud. Uh, ...to get that information. Yeah. Hold on a minute. Do you have any idea how long a minute can seem to that person who can't see what Susan is doing? What's she doing? Don't leave her dangling. Explain what's going on. I'm sorry. I'm going to have to look some more in the computer. It may take a little longer. Oh, ask her if she wants to wait. Oh, would you like to wait, or can I call you back? Write down her name and use it. Mrs. Jensen, right? Good. Okay, it'll just be a minute. I found the file. It'll just be a second now till I have the information you want. Excellent. 
Mrs. Jensen, the figure you asked about is $182.50. What else can she do? What else can I do for you? Good. She offered further help, and the customer could tell she meant it. If you have any other questions, don't hesitate to call me. Well, thank you, Mrs. Jensen. Goodbye. Ah, she's perfect now, right? And you know, I think I've got it figured out. The secret to good customer relations is looking and sounding like you're ready to help. That's part of it. But the secret is more than that. What more can there be? Well, good customer relations is also about building a relationship. It's about helping customers discover and meet their needs. Well, now, wait a minute. We already talked about all of that. Asking questions, uh, listening, discovering what the customer needs and wants, all of that. Yes, it's important to find the customer's immediate needs. But if you take the time to establish a relationship, often you can help them discover future needs or maybe help them avoid future problems. Okay. What's the technique? It's not a technique, Mike. Building a relationship starts with simply taking a genuine interest in your customer. Mm. Let's go back to Joan's desk. I'll show you what I mean. Good morning, Mr. Grant. How are you today? Oh, I'm fine. Just fine. Good. Now, how's your grandson? Mr. Grant comes in every Friday. And Joan likes to chat with him if she has a few minutes. He's here visiting me this week, you know. Oh, yes, you told me he was coming. Well, what have the two of you been doing? Oh, we fish quite a bit, and, uh, oh, he's been reading a lot. Smart as a whip, that boy. Notice, she asks open-ended questions. Ah, to get him talking. What does he want to be when he grows up? He says he's going to be a lawyer. Oh, isn't that great? I see. She's showing she's interested in what's important to him. Yes. And if she's really listening, she just got a clue to a possible need. She did. If she asks the right questions now, you'll see. What do you suppose college is going to cost by the time he gets there? Good. Oh, a lot. Yeah, he's going to need all the financial help he can get. Well, what would you think about starting a savings program for his education right now? I see. And did you notice? She didn't make that a yes or no question. She really wants to know how he feels about it, doesn't she? Right. She's not trying to push something on him. She's trying to help him. Hmm. Some kind of account to help him with his college. That's not a bad idea. Well, there are several plans you could consider. A uh, savings account, certificates, maybe a trust fund. If you have a moment, I'd be happy to explain the options to you. Oh, sure. There's nothing more important to me than that little boy. Good. Come on with me to my desk. We can talk about it. What she just did was called uh, consultative selling, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. But I don't see what that has to do with customer relations. Well, she helped him fill a need that was important to him, didn't she? Yeah, you're right. Hey, maybe it should be called uh, helpful selling. It's a good way to put it. So the secret to good customer relations must have something to do with taking time and, and building relationships, right? Again, that's part of it. But not the most important part. Then what is the secret? Can't you just tell me? I could, Mike. But to really understand it, you'll have to discover it for yourself. Watch this. Maybe you'll see what it is if we can get Joan to help this customer. Well, I'm not helping her much. But I sure am learning a few things. Hello? Hi. I forgot to get this parking ticket validated yesterday, and it cost me two fifty dollars to get out of the lot. I should be entitled to a refund, I think, and who do I talk to? Now, here's a chance to help a customer. I'm sorry, I can't help you, but uh, I know who can. Why don't I take you over to Mrs. Johnson? Perhaps she can help. Your name is... Sutton. Mrs. Johnson, this is Mr. Sutton. He had to pay to get out of parking yesterday. We wonder if maybe he could get a refund on that. Certainly. I'll just make a note on the ticket, and you can get your money back. Now, if she'll just stay with him. I'll take you to the teller now, Mr. Sutton. Excellent. She's staying with him until she personally sees that the problem will be solved. That's important. I'm sorry to have been so much trouble. Anything else we can do for you today, Mr. Sutton? Thank you very much. Now, don't tell me she spent all that time with him just to get more business. Not at all, Mike. Don't you know why she did it? Well, is he a big, important customer? I'm afraid you've missed the point again. And I give up. Look, I've only got one more day to go. And I'm no closer to finding out what the secret was and when I started, am I? Well, 
Maybe as you work with this person tomorrow, you'll discover the secret. Well, yeah, I'm no quitter. Okay, what's the guy's problem? Frankly, I don't know that he has any problems. John's just started in this job. But I thought you might find working with him especially interesting. Hey, this is my service department. Jack, Dennis, how's it going? You know, it sure is different around here without Mike. Yeah, that's right. No, look, guys, I'm right here. Yeah, we'll miss him. <laughs> Come on, guys. Yeah, but the customer sure won't. You got that right. <laughs> what kind of a crack is that? Hey. Hey, this guy's got my job. Yes, I know. You expect me to help him succeed with my job? Well, it should be easy, since you already know many of his customers. <laughs> well, I can't help him with that one. Nobody can handle McPherson. He's the eternal irate customer. This is the saddest excuse for a service department I've ever seen. Now, you call yourself a service manager. Well, I call this place lousy. And that's how I feel about it. And what about this alternator, huh? How about it? No one has to take that. There's only one way to deal with a customer that insults you personally. And, that's and that is to recognize that his anger isn't really directed at you personally. It's aimed at a situation that he feels he can't deal with. I never thought about it that way. I guess you're right. Your job, then, is to help the customer to deal with his problem in a rational way. <laughs> McPherson? Rational? Impossible. No, it isn't. Here's a list for dealing with irate customers. These steps apply no matter what the situation or the business you're in. Now, let's see. To help the customer dissipate his anger, you allow him to express it, you listen sympathetically, you empathize with his feelings. Oh, I understand how you feel. It's frustrating to spend so much on a fine car like yours and then have it out of commission so often. Well, that's exactly how I feel. It works. He's already starting to get McPherson calmed down. Uh, What's the next step? Help the customer find a solution. Let's see if we can find a solution to the problem. Hey, he's getting ahead of me. Uh, ask questions about facts, not emotions. Let me ask you something, Mr. McPherson. How many times have you had your car in? Four times. And the last time you had it in, we uh, rebuilt the carburetor. Did it run any better after that? For a while. How long? Two, three weeks, maybe. I noticed we've had to change all the filters every time you've been in. Yeah, and it didn't do any good. Uh, why can't you guys figure out what's wrong and fix it once and for all? I understand how you feel. He looks like he's willing to listen, doesn't he? Let me ask you something else. What kind of gas do you use? Well, I, I gas him at my son's farm. He's got uh, tanks for his machinery. He did a nice job of getting back to the facts with another question. <laughs> but I wonder if he'll come up with a solution now. Can you tell me is his gas filtered? Well, it's cheap, I know that. But well, say, do you suppose the gas could be a problem? I think it might be. Maybe we can try this. We'll flush out your tank, clean the carburetor, replace the filters, and you use nothing but filtered gas for a month. If that works, it'll cost you a lot less than replacing the carburetor. How's that sound to you? Yeah, I'll go along with that. And I appreciate you trying to keep the expense down. Well, yeah. I'm glad I could help. McPherson agreeable, I don't believe it. Yeah, what's John supposed to do next? Uh, get agreement to a possible solution? He's already done that. This is terrific. John just followed these steps and turned McPherson right around. It's not just following the steps that did it. Didn't you notice anything else? Something about John himself? Yeah, I noticed he's a lot better at my job than I was. The customers think he's great, the boss thinks he's great, everybody thinks he's great, and yeah, even I have to admit, he's good. No. Even if I could go back now, I wouldn't have a job. Looks like I'm here to stay. That's too bad, too, because I really learned a lot about customer relations in the last three days. What did you learn? Let's see. I learned how important it is to ask questions, to find out what the customer really needs and wants, and to listen, and to really help the customer. And I learned it's important to do something a little extra for the customer and to tell them what I can do for them, not what I can't. Of course, there's nothing like a smile to recognize the customer. Let them see by your actions that you're anxious to help. And if the customer can't see you, on the phone, for instance, the customer can hear the smile in your voice. And by using the customer's name frequently and writing it down, you show the customer you care. 
and recognize the customer. <laughs> they all want that. Oh, yes. And I learned about building relationships with customers and helping them discover future needs and about staying with the customer until the problem is solved. And I learned how to help an angry customer by listening and helping find a solution. But I still haven't figured out the secret to good customer relations. But I did learn one thing, though. What's that? Now that I think back at how Ed helped that customer, let me take you over to customer service. We'll see if they can do something. He was concerned for her. And I was thinking how Joan went to all that trouble over a parking ticket. I'm sorry you had to make an extra trip today on this ticket. Is there anything else we can do for you? All she wanted to do was help him. Like John said. Well, I'm glad I could help. Boy, that really says it. They all like helping people. I know I would if I had the chance. But you know, underneath it all, I really do like people. I just realize now how important it is to show people that you care about them and their problems. Yeah, I guess that's what it takes. You have to sincerely care about helping people. Care about people. Do you really believe that? Yeah. Do you understand it? You know I do. That's the secret, isn't it? Care. Care about people. You don't, you don't have to tell me. I know it is. If you care deeply about helping people with their needs and problems, you've got the secret to customer relations. But before all this, I thought I cared about people. I just know now I didn't care enough. Because if you really care, all of those techniques like smiling, asking questions, listening, recognizing the customer, going the extra mile, will all just happen. Because if I really care, I want to do those things automatically. Beautiful, Mike. Well, what do we do now? Well, you go back where you belong, since you have discovered the secret. Congratulations. Hey, what about John, my job? Oh, you'll go all the way back to that point in time when all of this began. And since none of this will have happened, you won't remember any of it. Not consciously, anyway. <laughs> you know, Mike, you're OK. Hey. Thanks. I'm sorry, sir, but customers are not allowed in this area. Excuse me. It's uh, Mr. Simpson, isn't it? Yeah. Well, I'm the service manager. I wonder if I could help. I want to talk to you. Okay. Look at this. May I? I wish you would. Ah. Well, I understand. I don't blame you for being angry. Tell you what, why don't we go someplace and talk about this? Maybe we can find a solution to your problem, okay? Sure. Can I ask you a couple of questions? Okay. How many times have you had this? Mike is going to be okay from now on, thank heaven. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. He's here about a job. Do you want to talk to him now? Excuse me, don't... Don't I know you from... I'll, uh, I'll be with you in a minute. Goodbye, Mike. Take care. <laughs> 